Our in-depth report about California's armed prohibited person system, better known as APPS, generated such a strong response, I decided to do a follow-up report with the DOJ special agent I interviewed about that list. The DOJ keeps a database of some 20,000 people it claims shouldn't be allowed to own a farm because they're a convicted felon or have been found by a court to be mentally ill. Governor Jerry Brown recently signed legislation providing $24 million to keep that program in operation. But as Special Agent Greg Cameron told me, the majority of people they targeted in these raids shouldn't have been targeted and that they never heard about the list or even knew they were on it. He called it gun confiscation under the guise of safety. Here's Agent Cameron in his own words. In these cases, we're talking about going and knocking on the door of someone that we know is in possession of a firearm and has been either convicted of a felony or found by a court to be mentally ill or both. The whole point of the operation is to make sure that our communities are safe. What's happening with these apps cases has nothing to do with hardcore criminals or gang members or murderers. And I've seen all those people. Literally, we're knocking on doors of people that I wouldn't give two looks to if I was on patrol, answering the door and asking them if they have firearms. And 95, 98% of the people that the firearms were confiscated, I really question why we were confiscating it. We have over 20,000 people on the streets of California who are known to be in violation of the law, who are some of the most dangerous people on our streets. And I'm going after them. I've never seen anything like this. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing for me when I was doing it. I'm not sending my agents out just one or two of them, because that is a potentially very dangerous situation for them. So we send out at least half a dozen at any one time. We would show up with way too many agents for the circumstance, and it didn't make any sense, and there was no need for it. And yeah, the whole place would be surrounded, and absolutely, there's an intimidation factor there that makes people allow or think that they need to allow law enforcement in their house. And if we found out there were guns in the house, then we would confiscate them. I think it is overbroad, overreaching, and I think it's confiscation under the guise of safety. That's what absolutely I think it is. And I think that's really the crux of this whole issue. You need to know what you can and can't do when confronted with law enforcement, especially in your own home. I mean, that's the premise of the Fourth Amendment. The apps cases, armed prohibited person system cases, does absolutely nothing to curtail crime and take it from somebody that's actually been on the street. I've literally put people in prison for their entire lives for killing other people and whole thing. Not one case I ever did that I see somebody like that and probably out of all the cases I did or was involved with, which is probably at least 100, okay? Maybe four or five I felt comfortable with, seriously. And I can tell you there was a source of conflict when we were doing these cases. There was actual verbal altercations between the agents and it was literally said, F you. I'm not doing that. This person's not a criminal. This person has no criminal record. Why are we concentrating on something like this? We know where we can go and catch people. And you know, the f you flag was raised over that. Because this whole freaking apps thing is not doing anybody any good. I'm all for taking dirtbags off the street, but I'm telling you, the majority of this crap, you know what, I never even came across a hardcore dirtbag. And I would say that everybody I talk to in law enforcement, at least 90% are gonna agree with 90% of what I'm saying right now. It's not like there's some big divide in law enforcement, but nobody listens to law enforcement rank and file when I'm telling you this apps case is not how you curtail crime and it's not what you do. I think it'd be very short-sighted for anyone to think that government should not maintain information and data that allows us to do our, our essential function, which is make sure that our communities are safe. That's ridiculous. They're still gonna preach that gun control works. It doesn't work. I defy anybody to show me any major city, like Chicago, New York, LA, all the big ones, that's not ran by liberals, that is not just a violent crap hole. Every place that's ran by these type of people with these over-regulation, banning firearms in the interest of safety, they're all violent cities. Not once have I ever come across a criminal, and I've arrested many, many criminals with guns on them. They weren't supposed to have them. Then you charge them with a crime. How did the law do anything? I just arrested him. Oh, so we got him off the streets. No, we didn't get him off the streets because he's been arrested like 20 other times before that and he'll be back. So what's the hang up with these people that are writing these laws? It makes no sense.
And just so you know, you can watch my first report about California's apps program and all of my videos by logging on to nranews.com slash Ginny. Take a look, let us know what you think, and keep us posted of any news story ideas you might hear about. On that note, thanks so much for watching. I'm Ginny Simone.